What's up YouTube? Today we're reviewing the 2022 Chevy Silverado. Huge thank you to Felipe Portillo over at Coons Tyson Chevy Buick GMC for allowing me to do this review for you guys today. If you're interested in this particular Silverado or any GM product with the exception of Cadillac, I'll have his information on screen as well as in the description box down below. But with that said, let's get into the video. First, let's talk about the exterior and performance. And this particular Silverado is a 2022 Silverado RST. However, it is an LTD RST. So basically what an LTD RST is, is a pre-facelifted 2022 Silverado. So it's basically kind of like a 2021 Silverado, but with a 2022 year on it. So it, you don't get all the 2022 updates like the interior and the refreshed front end, but it is a 2022 vehicle. But like I said, it is a 2022 Silverado RST and it is painted in Summit White. So what you get with the RST are these two grill bars that go across the front end as well as a black bow tie badge and you also have these grill inserts both in black on the bottom as well as on top right there as you can see. And moving down to the bottom of the front bumper here you can see you have a black recovery hook here as well as another black recovery hook right here as well. You also get a paint match front bumper up here and a paint match front bumper in the rear as well. Um, but you get LED fog lamps as well as LED headlights as well as an LED daytime running light right here. And where your daytime running light is right here, you can see it kind of looks like faux carbon fiber in there. I think that looks super, super sporty. Uh, and I definitely like how the headlight surround is like in that carbon fiber type material. Uh, it just gives it like a sporty look and it really matches that black front end, the black bow tie very very nicely but moving over to the wheels these are silver painted aluminum wheels and they are an 18 inch wheel and as you can see you do have your black bow tie on your center cap right there these are a 265 65 and like i said these are on an 18 inch wheel and as we move up right here you can see we do have a z71 badge so as you can tell obviously it's a z71 silverado so this particular silverado rst like I said, has the C71 off-road and protection package, which is a $1,310 option. So what you get with that is an off-road suspension with Rancho twin tube shocks, as you can see probably right back here, right there. See that white shock right there. I'm not sure if the GoPro is gonna pick it up, but you do see you have that twin tube shock right there. Backing out, you also get hill descent control as well as skid plates down here. See if I can show you guys that. You got a skid plate right there. You also get Z71 badges, obviously, and you get a two-speed transfer case as well as all-terrain tires, a locking rear differential, as well as dual exhaust as we walk around back here. You can see we've got our dual outlet exhaust both right there and right there. And as you can see, you got your paint match bumper back here as well with the step in it on both the driver and passenger side just to make it a little bit easier to get into your Silverado's bed. As you can see, RST badge, Silverado right there. But a few more things that you get with that Z71 off-road and protection package are a heavy duty air filter as well as all weather floor mats, which I'll show you guys right here with the Z71 badging on them, as you can see. Super, super nice, especially if you guys live in areas where they salt the roads or where it rains a lot so you don't ruin your carpet. Uh, but let's close that and continue on. You also get a spray in bed liner. As you can see right here, you got your Chevy emblem embossed into the bed liner right there. And you also get rear wheelhouse liners, as you can see. Uh, it just makes the truck look a lot more finished than if it didn't have those wheel liners. So I'm definitely a fan of that. But if you guys don't want to get the Z71 off-road and protection package, but you do want the spray-in bed liner, as well as these rear wheel well liners, uh, you can get the bed protection package, which is a $685 option. Um, but... You know, if you guys do not like these wheels on this particular RST, you do have some really nice wheel options ranging from 18 inch to 22 inch wheels in black, aluminum, or chrome. So definitely, if you guys like the look of this Silverado, but you're not totally sold on those wheels, like I said, you can get wheels ranging in size from 18 inch to 22 inch. And I'm actually a big fan uh, of the wheel designs that Chevy has for this RST. Uh, and I'll list some of those different wheels right here across the screen, just so you guys know exactly uh, what your different wheel options are. 
But last but not least here on the exterior, you do have these off-road high clearance steps and this is a $1,095 option. As you can see, they are painted in like that bed liner material that you can see uh, in the bed. And you also have your little Silverado badge embossed into that right there. Looks super good and uh, definitely good for off-roading because as you can see, it doesn't take away from ground clearance at all. But a couple things before we move into performance uh, that I did want to talk about is that you do have this black painted mirror cap right here. So like I said, you do have some of these black elements that really come together to look very, very good. Like I said, you got the black emblem right there as well as the black grill and uh, that carbon fiber, which is more of like a darker type uh, color here on the headlight surround. And like I said, they all come together just to make it look very, very good. It's like a Stormtrooper theme and it would look even better with black 22 inch wheels. But like I said, we're gonna do a 360 around the truck just so you guys know exactly what this thing looks like because it is a very, very pretty truck. As you can see, the window surrounds right here are in black, so it looks super good. Like I said, all those black and white elements come together just to make it look like it's like a Stormtrooper theme. And I think it looks really, really good. Moving back to here, like I said, you got your dual outlet exhaust, but you also have your trailer lighting options right here as well as right here. You also have your hitch right here. This particular Silverado has a max tow capacity of 9,500 pounds. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. You can also get uh, some of these vehicles that tow just a little bit more, but you do have to tweak engine size as well as add a max trailering package. Like I said, that is just what this particular Silverado can pull. But like I said, we'll do 360 view of this truck. And I just really like the body lines. It just looks like a really sporty and just overall really nice looking truck. And uh, it also rides like a really nice looking truck too. So if you guys are wanting to spend around 50 to $60,000 on a truck and you're like, hey, you know, I don't need all the features that uh, like these new trucks have, like the high countries or the platinums um, or like the limited Rams, then this would be a good option for you guys. Um, because you know this thing won't break the bank, but you still have really really nice features You got keyless access backup camera So basically you got like the features that you really need But you don't have all the features that you don't really need like a 360 degree view camera Well, yes, that is nice. You don't particularly need it So like I said if you guys really want just like a really nice sporty looking off-roady truck Then this might be the one to look into because like I said, it just looks very very good in person and um, I'm sure it looks really good uh, on camera as well. But let's move into performance and uh, talk about those performance numbers. Popping that hood reveals that 5.3 liter V8 that makes 355 horsepower and 383 pound-feet of torque. It also goes through an eight speed automatic transmission and with that 5.3 and 8 speed automatic transmission you're able to do 0 to 60 in 6.1 seconds which is very respectable uh, in my personal opinion if you guys want um, the Silverado with the 6.2 and the 10 speed you're able to get a 0 to 60 time of 5.4 seconds so um, yeah if you guys are lit like lead foot drivers you might want to look into the 6.2 but I think the 5.3 will do just fine for you guys you're just going to daily drive one of these and you don't really care that much about the performance numbers but with those numbers in mind you're able to achieve 15 miles per gallon city and 20 miles per gallon highway with four-wheel drive which is what this particular truck comes optioned with but on the RST there are three engine options available so you, like I said you have the 5.3 liter V8 matched to the eight-speed automatic transmission which is what is found in this particular RST but you can also get the three liter Duramax with the 10-speed automatic transmission and finally you can also get the 6.2 liter V8 with that 10 speed automatic transmission. So if you guys want to get that Duramax over the 5.3, that is a $920 option. But if you guys want to spring for the 6.2 liter over the 5.3, that is a $2,370 option. Um, so like I said, if you guys are lead foot drivers and you want just a little bit more performance, you're going to have to pay for it. Uh, so, but the 6.2 is a fantastic motor. Um, but like I said, if you guys are just going to daily drive one of these and you don't really care that much about performance and stuff like that, and you're not pulling trailers all the time, the 5.3 will do just fine. And it sounds great too. Uh, but closing that hood and let's move into the interior. But before we move into the interior, there are a couple things that I did want to mention that I kind of missed when we were back here. And that is that you have your backup camera right here, as well as a little LED light that shines down here, just to make it uh, a little bit easier to see what's going on back here at night. Uh, but you also have a dampened tailgate, so all you got to do is push this button right here and the tailgate comes down 
just like that nice and soft like I said, you have your Chevrolet emblem embossed into the bed liner right there, as well as you have LED lights right here, right here, and up there as well. So that just makes it a little bit easier to see what's going on back here at night. Uh, and you also have three tie downs right here, as well as three tie downs here, three tie downs in that corner, as well as three tie downs in that corner. So you have 12 different tie downs here in the bed, uh, which is really, really nice, uh, especially if you guys tie stuff down. Um, in your bed it just makes it that much more safe uh, when traveling down the road another thing that I did want to mention while we're back here is closing that tailgate that tailgate's actually pretty light uh, so it's pretty easy to close which is really nice uh, but you have a tailgate button right here to open up the tailgate so all you got to do is click this button twice tailgate comes down as you can see the lights are flashing to let you know that the tailgate is coming down uh, but yeah, that's just something I wanted to mention before we moved into the interior and like I said super light tailgate So closing that Let's move into the interior like you guys saw probably on the key fob This particular Silverado does have keyless access so you do have remote start So here on the key fob to remote start this vehicle All you got to do is push this lock button right here and then hold this button right here and it'll fire up As you can see and you can hear that 5.3 liter V8 roar to life. I'll show you guys kind of what it sounds like back here. It sounds very, very good. Very healthy sounding V8. But let's move into the interior. Like I said, you do have keyless access. You see this little button here on the door. Have your key fob in your pocket. Push the button on the door and your door opens up. Looking here at the door panel, you do have these leather type materials here on the top of the door as well as a nice padded armrest right here. It's not the most padded thing in the world, uh, but it's still actually very, very comfortable. You do have your faux wood right here with some aluminum trim right there. And the rest of this door panel here is in plastic, which is no big deal. You have a good amount of storage space right here. You got a cup holder right here as well as another cup holder or a little storage area back there as well. Obviously, you can see you got your unlock and lock buttons right there. You got your aluminum door handle right here. Get your door handle right here to grab the door to close it. And right here, you see you got your automatic up and down window right here, as well as your automatic down window right there, and your automatic down windows here in the back as well. But you do not have automatic up windows, uh, both on the passenger or those rear windows. Um, right here, you got your mirror controls. These are not power folding mirrors, so you do have to manually fold them. They do not have blind spot monitoring either, but you do have the old fashioned blind spot monitoring right there as well. Uh, and obviously to lock those rear windows, you just push that button right there. You got a 10 way power driver seat right here, which is really nice, but you do have a manual passenger seat over there. Uh, moving to right here, you got your different drive modes, uh, but let's step into the interior. I really like this grab handle. It makes it just a little bit easier to step into this RST, but let's close that door right there. And uh, push this button right here to get all the functions uh, of the vehicle when it's on. Turn that radio off. As you can see right here, you have your 4.2 inch driver information system that you can control with this little scroll knob right here, as well as these little buttons right here. So you got your home button, you got your in vehicle information, so you can scroll through here. Uh, obviously, you can see you got your gyroscope type thing or whatever that thing's called. Uh, you got your average fuel economy right there as well as your brake pad life, which is really cool That's a really cool feature. You also have your air filter life as well as your tire pressures uh, oil life Fuel range stuff like that and you can go through here. You can go through your different settings uh, But if you go back to home, you can see you've got your digital speedometer right there as well as your fuel range Right there. This particular truck has 13 miles on it. You can see we're in two-wheel drive right there uh, and if you guys want to switch into four wheel drive or auto, you got your auto button right there. So that's basically kind of like all wheel drive in a sense. Um, you have your four high right here, two high as well as four low. Like I said, you got this little dial right here. So when you turn it to the left, you go into tow haul mode, which the light of tow haul mode pops up right there. And if you twist it to the right, you go into sport or off road. So you have three different drive modes, normal, sport, 
as well as off-road. And when you put it into sport mode, it basically holds the revs a little bit more. Um, so basically, it's for more sporty driving. How often you're gonna be sporty driving this, I'm not quite sure, but it holds the gears for longer uh, and stuff like that. Um, but I don't really think you guys are gonna be throwing this into sport mode all that often, but you also do have your off-road mode um, and your normal mode, like I said. But over here, this button right here is for your LED fog lights. This is for your rear cargo lights. So turn that on, your cargo lights are enabled. Push that button again and they turn off. These two buttons right here, this is to raise the brightness of your cluster right here. And this is to dim the brightness of your cluster right here. Obviously you can tell that this is your headlight controls right here. So right now we are in automatic, which is what I would personally recommend. But if you guys don't want to do that, you can turn it to your daytime running lights. So now it says automatic light control off, but your daytime running lights are on. Twist it one more time to the right, and now your headlights are on. Um, but like I said, I personally would leave it in automatic. If you twist it all the way to the left, automatic headlight control is off. And your headlights are off, your fog lights are off, daytime running lights are off. Uh, so like I said, just leave it in automatic, let the truck do its thing, it knows what to do. Um, but you got your grab handle right here, opening this up, opening this up. You can see you got your mirror right here, but you do not have lights on the side of it. So if you do want to see yourself at night, you are going to have to push this button right here to illuminate your LED light right there. But let's move into this gauge cluster right here. You can see you got your oil pressure right here as well as your coolant temperature right there. You got your fuel gauge right here as well as your battery voltage right there. And as you can see right here, you've got your analog RPM gauge as well as an analog speedometer right there. But you do have a digital speedometer readout right here on your uh, driver information center. Uh, so that's definitely uh, a nice little feature to have without having to look over here. Just makes it a little bit easier to drive when you're on the highway uh, and you want to know exactly what your speed is. It's easier to look at this digital speedometer readout than it would be to kind of look at this uh, dial right here. Uh, but you also have your park, reverse, neutral, drive, and low right there. And you do have a gear mounted shifter right here. Um, so as you can see, we are in drive. And if you want to go into manual mode, all you got to do is uh, to upshift, you go like that. To downshift, you go like that. Um, so basically, it's, it's as easy as that. But throwing her back into park, as you can see at the bottom left-hand corner right here, you can see you got your compass. So that tells you we are facing in a northeast direction right now. Uh, but you do have your rear view mirror right here. You do not have uh, an auto dimming rear view mirror. This is just like your regular rear view mirror. But if you guys want the old fashioned auto dimming, all you got to do is push forward on that. And uh, that is the old fashioned auto dimming rear view mirror. But like I said, you got your LED light right here, LED light right here. Uh, if you guys want the lights to not be on when you open up the door, you can see that little light is illuminated right there. You click that on. Now my door is open and the lights come on uh, with the door being open. But like I said, if you guys don't want the lights to come on with the door being open, you just push that button right there and uh, that little light illuminates. And right here, this is to turn on all the lights in the interior right there, as you can see. Let's turn that off. And you got your OnStar controls right here and your passenger airbag right here. Pulling this down, it's the exact same as the driver's side. You do not have any lights. Um, so like I said, just fire on that light and uh, you'll be able to see yourself at night. You got your mics for your Bluetooth telephone right here. Uh, and moving down to the center stack right here, you got an eight inch infotainment screen right here with wired Apple CarPlay as well as wired Android Auto. So you do not have wireless Apple CarPlay or wireless Android Auto, but like I said, all you gotta do is plug it into either your USB-C port or your USB-A port right here, uh, and you will have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. This particular truck does have a heated steering wheel, so push this button right here, and uh, your heated steering wheel fires on, which is awesome. I love a heated steering wheel, especially this time of the year. It's only like 44 degrees outside. As you can see, you got your outside ambient temperature right there. Uh, so that definitely helps, especially when your hands are cold and it's a little blustery. Uh, just turn that on and uh, hold your hands right here and it'll warm them up very quickly. It's actually a uh, very quick heated steering wheel. So that's really nice. You got your black bow tie emblem right here on your leather wrapped steering wheel. You got your voice controls right here as well as to decline a phone call. You just push that button right there. Uh, like I said, these controls control what's going on there. Cruise control settings are right here with your heated steering wheel button right there. You do have an electronic emergency brake right here. So all you gotta do is push on it and you can see your park brake comes on right there. Uh, to push that button again with your foot on the brake and it'll disengage the parking brake. As you can see, the park brake went off. Parking brake released, as you can see. Um, but 
moving back to over here you got your hvac vents here hvac vents here here and over there as well uh, but you got your volume knob right here as well as your tuning knob right here as you can see um, obviously this is touch screen as well so you can do home uh, you can go through your different screens right here you can switch into your camera it'll show you your backup camera or if you have a trailer attached um, you can see you have your guidance lines right there to back up to a trailer uh, but like I said, you got your audio information right here. You got Sirius XM, stuff like that. Phone stuff, this particular truck does have Wi-Fi connectivity. Uh, if you guys do want to connect to Wi-Fi, you got your different settings right here that you can go through. Uh, app settings, as well as vehicle settings, stuff like that. If you guys don't want to hit the phone button on the touch screen, you can just push this button right there and it'll bring you to your home screen. Uh, like I said, you got your little clock right here, ambient exterior temperature phone stuff right here and you got your OnStar stuff right here but we'll go back into audio um, and back to our home screen just like that and you guys can see what's going on right here so that's a nice little screen right here like I said um, for the new 2022 vehicles that are not LTDs you have a nice big 13 or 14 inch screen I'm not quite exactly sure what the new screen size is uh, but you definitely get a nicer screen that's a little bit bigger. Uh, but this thing will do just fine. Uh, I'm telling you, this 8-inch screen, nothing to complain about. Uh, it gets the job done. And uh, yeah, nothing to complain about. Like I said, it's a great working screen. Uh, but like I said, go back to home. Uh, and you got your climate control settings right here. So if you want to turn it to colder, you can see your temperature right there as well as your temperature over there. If you guys both want to be uh, on the same temperature, as you can see, they're different temperatures right now hit this sync button and you'll go to what the driver temperature is right there. But we'll warm it up a little bit uh, because it's pretty cold outside, but we're gonna turn that off. As you can see, you got your different climate control stuff right there. This particular truck does have heated cloth seats, which is really nice on these cold days uh, that you do now have heated cloth seats. Uh, you do not have ventilated seats. You do have to get leather seats to get ventilated seats. But actually talking about the heated and ventilated seats, some vehicles built after 11 15 21, which is November 15th, 2021, will not include heated or ventilated seats. And that is due to the chip shortage. Uh, so some new 2022 GM vehicles will not have heated or ventilated seats. So that's definitely a bummer. Uh, but you know, that's what's to blame on the chip shortage. Unfortunately, this chip shortage is a pain in the rear end. Uh, but hopefully with 2023 or something like that around that time frame, uh, hopefully everything will be back to normal. We can only have our fingers crossed about that because nobody really knows, to be honest with you. Uh, but if you want to have your heated back on, you push this button right here that only heats up your back. But if you want your butt and your back heated, you can see you push this button right here and it is both your back and your butt. Um, but same goes for your passenger side as well right there. This is your auto stop start button right here. Uh, and I know some 2022 vehicles are actually not including auto stop start and they're giving you like a $50 to a $200 credit depending on the manufacturer. Uh, but I definitely don't like auto stop start. So I would actually like if they would remove this and give me a $50 credit, but not a big deal. All you gotta do is push on it and uh, you got your auto stop start off. Um, as you can see, you push this button right here, boom tailgate pops down as you can see just like that boom that's so that's your tailgate release button this is your hazard as you can see right there turn those hazards off traction control button and you got your hill descent control right here and you also have your integrated trailer bait control right here as well as you can see like i said usb a usb c ports right here you also have a 12 volt outlet right there like i said you do have keyless access so obviously that means you do have push button start to see that the vehicle's on, you got a green illuminated light right there. This particular truck does not have a center console, so you do have this folding down bench seat, but you do have two cup holders right here, a little bit of storage space right here and over here as well. You got a good place to set your phone down right here. It's actually a very comfortable center console, so it's actually a good spot. Like if I set my elbow down right here, it's very comfortable and it really matches this spot over here very well. So definitely uh, not uncomfortable by any means. And you do have this nice little grab handle. So if you do have six passengers in the vehicle, you just pull up on that and you have a sixth seat right there. But folding that down, you also see you got your seatbelt right here as well. One thing that I didn't mention is that this does have the six speaker audio system. So this is not an upgraded sound system, but it still sounds actually very good, surprisingly. Um, so 
Yeah, if you guys don't super care about like uh, premium audio or Bose sound system, this sound system sounds fantastic. But there's a couple more things that I wanted to mention and that pertains to this trailer brake controller. This integrated trailer brake controller is a $275 option. And last but not least, these exterior mirrors right here, while not power folding, they are heated. So when you turn on your defroster right here, uh, your heated mirrors come on as well. So that's really nice. So when it's snowing out and you got snow covered or ice covered mirrors, all you gotta do, turn your defroster on and your heated mirrors will pop on and uh, you don't have to worry about scraping the uh, ice off or anything. So we've talked about the exterior, we've talked about the performance and we've talked about what's going on up here in these two front seats. So now let's move into the rear and I will show you guys kind of what the rear comfortability is like back here. Uh, so basically door panel is the exact same as what it's like in the front. You got your nice padded armrest right here as well as your automatic down windows, but they are not automatic up. Aluminum grab handle and you got a little bit more storage space down here. And as you can see, you've got your step to get into the vehicle right here with your grab handle right here as well. So, uh, but before you step into the vehicle, you do have these two little spots both right here as well as over there that you just pull this open you guys can put stuff back here uh, small little items or items that you don't want other people to see you can hide in there so that's really nice these seats also do fold up just like that to reveal just a little bit more storage space uh, back in here so if you guys don't want all your stuff to go flying throughout the vehicle uh, you can just put it right in here and then it won't roll throughout the interior but closing that and moving into the interior like I said you have this grab handle which really helps you step into the interior and I actually am a big fan uh, of the comfortability of these seats. These seats are actually very, very comfortable and supportive back here. Got some nice bolstering right here on my left side as well as over here on my right side. And you also do have a nice center fold down armrest right here with two cup holders and a little bit of storage space here in the middle of that. Um, so definitely it feels very, very comfortable with my arm on this armrest right here as well as my arm on this armrest right over here as well. Just a super, super comfortable interior back here. Uh, but let's fold that up. You got your two HVAC vents, both right here as well as over here. And you have two USB-A ports right here and a 12 volt outlet right here as well, as you can see. You got your all weather floor mats, which are really nice, like I mentioned. Uh, but you also have your two seat back pockets, both right here and over here. Uh, but you know, we've talked about the exterior, we've talked about the performance, now we've talked about what's going on here in the interiors. So now I wanna see what this thing's like to drive. So I will see you guys in the driver's seat. But before we move into the driving portion of the review, if you guys are enjoying today's video, please give this video a big thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button. I'm really gunning for 10,000 subscribers and I can't do that without your guys' help. So I, like I said, I'd really appreciate it. It really helps out the video and it also really helps out the channel when you guys give this video a thumbs up. Leave a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know which is your favorite trim level of the Silverado. Would you guys get the RST? Would you guys get the Trail Boss? Would you get the high country? Let me know in the comment section down below. But like I said, now I will see you guys in the driver's seat. And now onto the driving portion of the review. And we have our Casey's Automotive POV hat that we're putting on right now. This is a new camera angle for me. I had a different camera angle that I did with my GT500 video and uh, it didn't turn out too well. So we're gonna turn this camera on and I'm gonna have this camera going and I'm also gonna have this camera going. So uh, this is my first time doing this uh, like this. So bear with me, um, but yeah, now on to the driving portion of the review. And I know I look like a total goofball, um, but you know, I know that when I was watching review videos of cars that I wanted um, back when I couldn't drive or I, you know, um, just cars that I couldn't afford. And you know, I still can't afford cars now, but uh, I always wanted to see like a point of view uh, in my reviews. So now that's something that I want to bring into my reviews with you guys. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to be quiet a little bit on the review just so you guys can kind of see what's going on um, within the vehicle. So you guys can see and hear exactly kind of what this vehicle sounds like, what it looks like uh, from the driving point of view. Um, so I'm going to be quiet on some of this review uh, just to kind of feel it out, see kind of what's going on but you know this thing is still a really really nice riding vehicle uh those rancho shocks and just everything the suspension is super super nice when you go over bumps and stuff 
super compliant uh, you almost can't even feel the bumps which I'm very surprised about in a truck like this you think you might be able to feel the bumps uh, more than you normally would and I'm a little bit surprised by that because this thing is just a super super nice riding truck it doesn't have the magna ride or the air suspension uh, but it's still a very very nice riding truck uh, it's a super quick motor you know like I said it's a 5.3 liter v8 so you make 355 horsepower 383 pound-feet of torque um, so it's not the fastest motor that you can get. Like I said, you can get the 6.2 liter V8. That's a little bit faster than this. It's got more torque. Uh, it's better for towing, stuff like that. But if you guys, like I said, don't do towing that often, stuff like that, uh, then the 5.3 liter V8 is just plenty good. But we're gonna pull out onto here. Coming back to add a little bit of commentary onto the drive, it's very, very quiet in here. Um, GM vehicles are very well insulated uh, from the outside world, so you don't really hear uh, too much loud ruckus, uh, what's going on. They're doing a lot of construction on this road. Um, there's a good amount of traffic. We're going, we were going a pretty decent speed, 45, 50 miles an hour, and it's still super, super quiet in here. You guys can hear we're going over bumps. And you can, I mean, you can't really even hear the bumps. Just a very, very solid feeling vehicle going over the bumps. Uh, and like I said, it's just super quiet here uh, on the interior. As we pull up to this light, uh, this is totally unrelated to this vehicle, but I think I just want to add it uh, into the video because it's just kind of interesting is that I got a head mount for uh, this GoPro that you can see right here. And um, I put it on and, you know, it's actually at this exact moment when we had the GT500, um, and that camera angle just got totally shot, unfortunately, especially with the coolest car, uh, to get shot with, uh, the video got kind of got shot, which is unfortunate, but you know, you learn from your mistakes and stuff like that. We got an 18 wheeler right here. Um, that's kind of pulling out onto the roadway, but it's unfortunate because it was such a cool vehicle and it was of course at the acceleration part uh, of the video, but we're going to do a little acceleration here. I don't know if we're going to do a zero to 60, uh, but we're going to do a little bit of a hammer down acceleration. So we're gonna do from about 10 miles an hour, here we go. Five three sounds fantastic. Like I said, 15 miles per gallon city, 20 miles per gallon highway. So not the greatest fuel economy, uh, but you know, not the worst fuel economy either. Like I said, you got a V8. Uh, that can tow 9,500 pounds. So yes, you don't have the greatest fuel economy, but if you guys are looking for fuel economy, you don't really care about performance and you do a little bit of towing, uh, then the three liter Duramax is the motor that you're gonna wanna get because it gets fantastic fuel economy. I believe it's like 26-ish miles per gallon highway. I'll put the exact figure of what the city and highway miles per gallon figure is for the three liter Duramax here on screen. Uh, but like I said, if you guys are worried about towing, you're gonna wanna get the 6.2. If you guys are worried about fuel economy, you're gonna wanna get the three liter Duramax. If you guys just go day to day, you do a little bit of towing, uh, and you do want a pretty quick vehicle, then the 5.3 is the way to go. Uh, it's definitely very quick, like I said, I believe it's 6.1 second zero to 60, which is plenty fast, like I said, for a vehicle of this size. Uh, and you know, like I said, you do not have blind spot monitoring, but you do have the old fashioned blind spot monitoring, which is like that fish eye type mirror right there, as you can see. Uh, so it's definitely great. I actually just pulled out onto the highway, as you guys obviously saw. And um, I was merging onto the highway and I was looking in that mirror right there and it's actually in like the perfect position because it really does angle you uh, into your blind spot. But you know, this vehicle really, if you look back there, the blind spot's not terrible because you got your window right here, you got a window right there. Um, so yeah, it lets in plenty of light. Uh, so definitely blind spot, definitely not terrible. Uh, and you also have just these big mirrors that also help out with the blind spot. And if you guys adjust your mirrors correctly, uh, then you should not have a terrible blind spot. Yes, you probably will still have a little bit of a blind spot, uh, but it won't be as bad um, if you have your mirrors adjusted correctly. You guys should have learned that in like driver's ed, but uh, you know, some teachers don't teach that. 
uh, beautiful little dog right there uh, but like I said, this thing's just super solid, it goes over bumps very, very well. It's a very comfortable ride, like I said, super quiet. Uh, and I actually don't mind not having a center console here because uh, I set my arm down right here and it's just super, super comfortable. Uh, and like, just like the, the level of how high it is and how low it is, whatever uh, you wanna say, it's just in like the perfect spot in my personal opinion. For me, five foot nine, uh, so not the tallest person. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely a good spot for me to set my arm down here and as well as over here. But like I said, you guys have your power adjustable seat, so you guys can adjust your seat uh, pretty much how you want it, and you guys will be able to find a pretty comfortable position dependent on um, this uh, center console right here as well as this armrest right over here. Uh, but yeah, interior, yes, you don't have the updated interior for 2022. Like I said, this is an LTD RST. Uh, so like I said, you do not get the refresh design on the exterior or the refresh design on what's going on here in the interior and that is because um it's just a little bit cheaper than the updated uh 2022 silverados so if you guys want a 2022 vehicle uh, but you don't really care about the infotainment and you don't really care about the new updated front fascia then you might want to look into getting uh this silverado ltd or any ltd silverado um, just a little bit cheaper than the 2022 refresh design. Um, so if you guys want, like I said, a 2022, but you don't want to spend $2022, then uh, you definitely want to look into getting the LTD. And you know, it's still a very nice interior. You know, I know a lot of a lot of people give uh, GM a lot of flack for their interior game uh, on the you know the older models like the 2020s, 2021s, and stuff like that. But you know, it's really not that bad. You know, you got Apple CarPlay, you got your Android Auto, uh, you got your little productivity screen. So if you guys don't really care about like all the new flashy uh, features and stuff like that, this is a great vehicle to get because it's got all the useful features that you want. Yes, you don't have blind spot monitoring and stuff like that. But you know, like I said, you have Apple CarPlay, you've got a really good stereo for this being like the base stereo system. It still sounds fantastic. And you know, some of like the other manufacturers, you get the stereo uh, that's just like the base stereo and it doesn't sound that great. But here on this Silverado, this six, six speaker base sound system sounds really, really good. Uh, and if you guys don't want the base sound system, you can always upgrade to the Bose sound system for a little bit more bump um, and just a little bit better sound system. But like I said, this one still sounds plenty, plenty good. Um, and you know, just the fit and finish of this interior, while yes, it's not the most up-to-date interior, it's still very, very good. Uh, so I personally uh, would drive a truck like this. You know, you got your storage space right up here to set a phone, tape measure or ruler, stuff like that. Uh, just small little items right up there. So that's really nice. Uh, but yeah, you know, for those of you who, like I said, don't care about all the new features that they always come out with stuff like that then this might be the truck for you because uh it's less stuff to break you know like i said you've got all the features that you want you got heated seats you got a heated steering wheel uh which is personally for me that's definitely a must i love my heated seats i love a heated steering wheel my personal vehicle has heated seats but it doesn't have a heated steering wheel so i'm personally having a really nice time with this heated steering wheel here uh, i like feeling the heated steering wheel especially on those cold days it really does actually if you never had a heated steering wheel it really helps uh, on those cold days when your hands get cold. Uh, it really does warm up your hands. So if you guys think that the heated steering wheel is a gimmick, it is not a gimmick. It works fantastically. Um, so yeah, like the black bow tie emblem right here, you got your column mounted shifter. Like I said, if you want to upshift or downshift, you got the option of doing that right here. Uh, and you also have low mode and you got your four wheel drive stuff right over here. Um, also cargo lights, like I said, right over there. Uh, but yeah, just a fantastic vehicle. I'm actually very surprised at how well this vehicle rides as well as how well this thing handles because you know, when you go around turns, you'd think that this thing would have a lot of body roll and kind of lean and push into the turn, but it really handles honestly phenomenally well. I'm actually, like I said, very surprised at how well, not only does it go over bumps and stuff like that, uh, but how well it handles around turns because like I said, there's not a crazy amount of body roll. And sometimes when you don't have the body roll, you kind of have more of a firm, harsh ride, but you know, this thing doesn't have the body roll and that is a very nice plush ride, but it's not like bouncy or anything like that. So I'm definitely a big fan of this suspension. Uh, definitely rides phenomenally well. And uh, yeah, that's the end of today's video. To summarize this vehicle, 
Uh, it's got all the features that you really want. It doesn't have all those fancy gimmicky features that you don't really need, but are re definitely really nice to have if you guys do have that uh, in your budget and you're willing to spend more on a vehicle, then you know you might want to look into a high country. You might want to look into like a Sierra Denali or something like that. But for those of you guys who are on a budget and you want to spend like 55 grand on a truck, this is a fantastic truck. It looks fantastic, sounds fantastic, and it just drives fantastic. So if you guys enjoyed today's video, please give this video a big thumbs up. Leave a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know what your favorite feature was of the Silverado RST. Let me know, would you get the 5.3, 6.2, or the three liter Duramax? But like I said, that's the end of today's video, guys. Like I said, please give this video a thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button. I'm really gunning for 10,000 subscribers, and I cannot do that without your guys' help. But with that said, I will see you guys in the next review. Peace.